From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Today we have an astounding program for you with our global headlines. You know, we get those headlines every single day from around the world right here at our headquarters and we try to give you the ones that we feel are so relevant to your life. Number one, an ID card needed for a socialist America. Israel fears Obama heading for imposed Mideast settlement. And number three, U.S., China, and Russia lift arms spending to new record, spending more than ever on arms. Today we have an astounding program, as I mentioned to you, and we're going to be talking about a prophetical review or preview of rapidly coming events. Now let's take a look at some of those that are happening right now. I have used this so very many times, Jack, probably, I don't know, maybe 30 times. 30 times. But uh, Mr. Kissinger is a well-known Nobel Prize winner and quite a voice, and he had something to say. Obama is primed to create the new world order. We want to keep that in mind. Another expert, long view on Iran. Now this is Zygmunt Brzezinski. And he was the chosen one to lead Obama as his mentor, leading him into the New World Order. And he certainly did it. Here is a Selma Norman Thomas, six-time U.S. presidential candidate for the Socialist Party of America. And look at what he had to say, the American people. will never knowingly adopt socialism. But under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program until one day America will be a socialist nation without knowing it happened. It's here, Excella. It's here. Boy, how powerful. Here's someone else. Saul Linsky. Now, he was our president's inspiration. Jack, would you like to say a word about him? I'll please? say something about some of these people. This is the man that, in his writings, constantly talked about change, 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 which you heard our president say during the time of election. But he meant a change to socialism and communism, and that's his background. And I'll tell you, our president's been intertwined with many of these kind of people. Take a look again at this next picture, if you will, please, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, Obama's minister for 20 years, a very um, big voice there for our president. And his message was liberation theology. Now, many people who love the Lord Jesus with all their hearts don't understand what this is. So let me tell you, when Pope John Paul II went to South America, he was angry because his priests and bishops were preaching liberation theology, which is the mixture of Marxism, communism, and Christianity. And he really told them how he felt about it. Well, this is what his pastor preached for 20 years. He's been indoctrinated in socialism. All right, here's another uh, face that we all recognize because he was a czar. Green Jobs czar, and that is Van Jones. Now, Jack, he did resign. He claimed he was a communist and also taught that when 9-11 happened, it was created by Bush and the CIA. The public became angry and he had to drop the position as a czar, one of the 32. And many of these people around him feel socialistic. Here's a, a woman, I did not recognize her, Carol Browner, climate change, Zarina, member of Socialist International. Now, Jack, I have a very big question here. I have quoted Kissinger time and time again. Forgive me if I do it again, 
but he has a big voice. Do you really believe that our president could become the leader of the new world order? Yes, and remember this. The European Union is socialistic to the core. And if we're going to get in there as Americans, we're going to have to do what Canada's done, become socialist. And he surrounded himself with these kind of people. But you see, I love our government, a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Socialism is controlled by the government in all the production and distribution of things and control of the people as you're going to see today. Now, why do we believe that the new world order, which is the European Union, is the final government in history which will lead us all into socialism? Well, the Bible teaches in Revelation 17.10 that there'll be seven world empires, and the seventh one would be the revived Roman Empire. And in 1948, Benelux was formed, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, and that was the beginning. In 1957, we had Italy, France, and Germany join, and Henry Spock of Belgium said, Oh, I feel like I'm back in the days of the Roman Empire. He was, and the Club of Rome said, We verify this as the Treaty of Rome, because this is the revived Roman Empire. Then in 1973, we had England and Ireland, Denmark for nine. In 1981, we had Greece for number 10. 1995, it jumped to 13, Portugal, Spain, and Austria. And it now is at 27. But Sarkozy and France says we want it to move to 100 in the very near future. But I always said that there would be 10 nations, like other Bible teachers. And I was very sincere. I believe that. But when you see it growing to 27 and 100, and now they've even outlined the plan through the Club of Rome to pull in all 247 nations of the world and make them a 10-division world empire, the 10 divisions, America, Canada, and Mexico is number one. They're all here. They're all ready to go. Wow, we're living at a tremendous time. Now, I believe that the 10 division world empire is the right answer as I study history through Rabbi Hegion 2000 years ago. And then there was Barnabas who traveled with Paul and St. Arrhenius and Jerome, who was the author of the Latin Vulgate, the great Catholic edition of the Bible in his day. And he said, when we have the 10 division world empire, this will be the moment our Christ comes to set up his kingdom on earth for 1,000 years, Revelation 20, verse four. And you say, well, where does it talk about 10? In Daniel chapter two, it talks about the 10 toes and the image for the 10 division world empire. And then in Daniel's vision, in chapter 7 of Daniel, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, and then John's vision in Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16, it has the fourth beast with ten horns. And again, this is the final sign before the Lord Jesus returns, as we're going to show you. We're living in tremendous times, but socialism's ahead for all of us. A prophetical preview of what's coming. You know, did you notice something? He keeps giving us the Bible. Everybody has an opinion, but this is not Jack's opinion. He's quoting God's Word and showing us that it's in our day it's coming to pass for sure. Saying that America's becoming a socialist nation just seems so far out to me. So impossible almost. Well, here is one thing that we can probably count on needed for socialism, a national ID card by Rick Bringar. Hitler's system of identification throughout Europe was as follows. When Holland was invaded, the Jews were identified quickly through census records. Information from existing records such as health, insurance, welfare, parish or their churches, and birth and death records were added to the register with the goal of the total observation of life. The Nazis could then single out the weak and unsuccessful for sterilization and euthanasia. Death. Oh, I can't believe that one. Let's go to the Weekend Journal, the web's new gold mine. Your secrets. Now, you're talking about keeping our privacy, a journal investigation finds 
that one of the fastest growing businesses on the internet is the business of spying on customers. And again, the snitch in your pocket. Law enforcement is tracking America's cell phones in real time without the benefit of a war, and they can just get it. China aims to become supercomputer superpower. Now, we've gone through so many things that could very well happen, and we see them happening right now, don't we? Jack, in a moment, I'd like to talk about that supercomputer and superpower that China has just developed. But I'm amazed to see the world shaping up for the coming of the Lord. You read this, Rexel, and I want to repeat it. Needed for socialism, a national ID identification card. And just recently, in Virginia, the Bilderbergs had their annual global meeting and set up the plan to microchip all the citizens of the world, not too many years in the future. But when that happens, we'll be gone, the rapture, come up hither, praise the Lord. But I'll tell you, they will know how to keep track of you. Even now, the European Union has echelon in England that does three billion transactions daily through the internet and telephone. They've got track of every move you make. And they do it in every language of the world. Now, is this the Bible? Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18. He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number six hundred three score and six. And you can also find that in Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 11, chapter 15, verse 2, chapter 16, verse 2, chapter 19, verse 20, chapter 20, verse 4. If you receive the mark at that time, will, believers will be gone, but you who are left behind, you have no hope of heaven, Revelation 14, 11. If you reject it, you may die, but you'll be raised to live and reign with Christ, Revelation 20, verse 4. Now that is good news, Jack. Everything that we've been giving you today is amazing to me. That last headline that I gave you a moment ago, China aims to become supercomputer, superpower. They want to become that. We're number one still in the United States, but I can't believe how many calculations they can do in a second. Right now, a petaflop is 1,000 trillion calculations per second. The European Union can do 250 trillion calculations per second. That's only one-fourth of what China can do. China presently can do 1,100 trillion calculations per second, but America has a system called Jaguar that can do 1,750 trillion calculations per second. Almost on the way to two petaflops, but China says we're going to win. But what they're saying is only theoretical and hypothetical. They have to prove it. But they say we're going to go to 3,000 trillion calculations per second. Now, if this happens, that'll be enough to get one half million pieces of information on every human being on earth per second, per second. This is shocking. Now, here is the difference between the supercomputer that's coming and that America already has and the old PCs most of us use. One second out of supercomputer takes 10 hours for PC to figure out. One minute on a supercomputer takes 25 days for a PC to bring the equation to light. One hour on a supercomputer, get ready for a shock, takes four years for the PC to find the answer. And then, get it, one day on the supercomputer will take 100 years for the PC to find the answer. Folks, they'll be able to keep track of us. Don't worry about all these numbers. The Lord's coming. We're going to be gone. But how this book has come true, it's such an hour in history. It's here. Whoa. 
My mind's a bit boggled after all that. I can barely balance our bank book. How about you? But it is good to know, isn't it? that a good, wonderful event is going to happen, the greatest event in world history, the coming of our Lord. All this is pointing to it. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. We are going to be offering you a very, very wonderful offer uh, entitled Socialism Exposed. Take a look, please, as to what is really on this DVD. I really want you to have it, friends, more than anything that I've offered in a long time. Socialism exposed. America's infatuation with socialism is dangerous. In a socialist state, the government controls everything. Personal freedoms are surrendered, family values decimated, and your faith could even be forced underground. Yet young people are demanding socialism replace capitalism. Socialism is the transition point between capitalism and godless communism, and it is coming. Dr. Jack Vanapie foresaw the new rise of socialism and wanted you to know that not only does socialism spell disaster for America, it is also a sign of the latter days. He left instructions and video teaching for the creation of the shocking Socialism Exposed TV special now available on DVD. This uncut and unedited version contains significant new material we weren't allowed to air on TV. It's critical you get this information and share with friends, family, and your church. Socialism is an unbiblical system that leads to the rise of the Antichrist and the one world government predicted in Bible prophecy. Get Socialism Exposed now Call 1-800-JVI-7777 or go to jvim.com now to order your video. Featuring Drs. Jack and Rex Sullivan MP and expert Dr. Frank Wright, this video expose is vital to the future of our nation. You'll be helping us warn our beloved country and proclaim the hope of the gospel couple more things I want to add here, and that is on the DVD, you're going to be seeing so much more about what is happening in the world, maybe even in your family. We're going to be talking about God's remedy for our lives. And also, I'm going to be enclosing Jack's little booklet, Socialism Exposed, with your order. So please call or write to us right away, and we'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Very important, please make the call right away. And uh, here's our announcer to tell you once again how you can receive the wonderful offer of the week, Socialism Exposed. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend to order Socialism Exposed. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to encourage you, make the call or write to me right away. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you, and also I'll be sending you this little book that Jack did, Socialism Exposed. You need to have it. Oh, my, oh, my, our time is almost gone once again. But we need to address what's going on in the Middle East. Israel is saying that they would like now for the peace talks to begin again with the Palestinians getting it back on track. And let's take a look at this. Israel welcomes new peace talks with the Palestinians. Abbas and Mitchell discuss final status issues. Whoa, that word, final? Assad to Obama drop plan for Israel-Syria peace talks. Abbas to Obama impose Mideast peace solution. Uh-oh, impose it? Impose it? Israel fears Obama heading for imposed Mideast settlement. 
ex-Spain Prime Minister, if Israel goes down, we all go down. Russia wants warships stationed around the world. Russia is really entering in to what's going on in the Middle East. Russia tests sea and land-based nuke missiles. And again, Army phone links China and Russia. Good buddies there. Russia and China to hold joint military exercises. And here you see it again. U.S., China, and Russia lift arms spending to new record, a new record for spending. I addressed that in the beginning of the program, if you remember, and we will talk about it in detail in just a moment. But did you notice who the countries in the Middle East are looking to to help them begin the peace talks again? Mixed feelings over there in the Middle East about our president, Jack. As you know, I've used the headline about Kissinger over and over and over because I'm not saying that Obama will be the one, the head of the Bilderbergs. Henry Kissinger is the one saying it. And I'm listening to what he's saying because I believe he could be correct. And as he tells us that this president of ours would become the creator of the new world order. And that's the one I call the dictator of the one world government. And you know, Everything is working in that direction right now. Even Obama, when he went to West Point, said, we need a new world order. In Germany, seven times he talked about one world government, new world order. He's promoting the thing. Maybe Kissinger had it right, huh? Now listen very carefully. This is shocking because the one who leads the new world order is the one who negotiates the peace pact between Israel, the Palestinians, and then eventually the entire world. That's going on right now. The Muslim leaders want our president to do the job. Assad of Syria, Abbas of the Palestinians, King Abdullah II of Jordan, Mubarak of Egypt, all saying we want you to do it and impose it, force it. Well, that's what the Bible says. He's going to come in peaceably, Daniel 11, 21. Enter in peaceably, Daniel 11, 24. As I already said, and believe me, ladies and gentlemen, that peace contract will be one that destroys people, Daniel 8, 25. Why? Because they have a false hope. Oh, it's here. Our leader has come of the new world order. Peace, peace. Oh, there's been so many wars. And now it's settled. And that is the problem because while they're crying peace and rejoicing, Jeremiah 6, 14 and Jeremiah 8, 11 says, there will be no peace. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 says, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Rexella, who's it going to be? Well, it's going to be Russia, I believe. In fact, they've got their ships stationed now in strategic areas of the world with sea-to-land missiles on those ships ready to go. So they're very powerful and going to be very involved, I believe. Oh, and they're working with China on the Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization, and they've vowed to work together for the next world war. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bible prophecy. First of all, Russia, Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, talks about God, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh, fighting the war of the latter years and the latter days, verses 8 and 16. Now, there's no mistake about them doing it because the peace has just been made, and Rosh, or Russia in Greek, or Russian English, says in verse 11 of that 38th chapter, I'm going against them that are at rest. I'm going against them that are at peace. This is the hour in history when it could all happen. Now, in chapter 39, verses 1 and 2, God says, Behold, I'm against you, Gog of Magog, the Russian prince of Moscow and Tobolsk. I'll turn you back and leave, but the sixth part of the five, six, or your armies are going to fall. And verse 12 says, It'll take seven months just to bury the dead, working around the clock, 24 hours a day. Verse 13, uh, Russia marches in Joel 2, verse 3, toward Israel. A fire devours before them, nuclear warfare. They're pushed back to Siberia, verse 20. And as they're pushed back, the prophecies, blood, fire, pillars, columns of smoke, the exact effect of a nuclear blast. And a greater shock, this war has started because they gave Jerusalem to the Palestinians, to the Muslims, Joel 3, verse 2, which our president wants to do. Well, 
there's a flop there. And the next thing is the cooperation of China as they make the move. The kings of the east, Revelation 16, 12, for the greatest war in history, Revelation 9, verses 14 to 18. Then all the world comes against Israel. They're hated in Zechariah 14, verse 2. And the Lord Jesus comes back, sets his foot on the Mount of Olives, verse 4, and he's the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. And from that hour on, they beat their swords and the plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. War is over. It's finished. Praise the Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. You know, Jack, I know that people are wondering, how's all this going to affect me? We've given you so much today, so much to think about. How's it going to affect you if the Lord says, when you see all these things happening, I'm coming again, and it could be very soon. Are you ready for that greatest event of all? Oh, Jack, pray, please, and to tell us how to be ready. It doesn't take much. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Nine words, and Jesus said, you're going to be with me. Would you pray those words? Lord Jesus, Savior, the only Savior, thank you for the cross. Thank you for shedding that precious blood to cleanse me and save me. I receive what you did this very moment. Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Amen. Oh, amen. I trust you prayed that prayer. And if you did, will you write me? I'd love to send you absolutely free a little book of first steps in a new direction. You know what? You don't have to be on drugs and all the rest to have peace in this world. The Lord is in your heart and he will bring peace to you. Oh, my friends, do you wish you were in a position to make a difference? I know you're thinking that right now. I'd love to be in a position to change everything in this world. Well, you can help. The most powerful position on earth is kneeling before the Lord of the universe. How true. We need to be in prayer. Look forward to being in your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.